It separated families and cut people off from their grazing lands, watering holes, and shrines. Ten thousand Navajo and one hundred Hopi found themselves on the wrong side of a fence. Congress ordered them to relocate. Washington seems to be very immature. They believe in lies. They have no pity and cannot see us. We go around wiping our tears because of what they do. Because we don't count our plans and thoughts for walking forward into a good future have been taken from us. It seems as though our future has been beaten out of us with a stick. What is there to make us whole again? There's nothing. To force the Navajo out, the government began destroying the plants that the people depend on. Our mother is the earth. All the plants, whatever it's on, on earth is, some of it is our food and some are medicines and that's how we live on and uh, as though we are the children of our mother earth and how she feeds us is causing the whole thing we're going through we're going through suffering from everything that what the BIA is doing to my nation. See what you did to my people? See what you did to them? You took their very lives away from them. You better not dead. The government says it takes 35 sheep to support a family of four. This same government is now reducing Navajo herds below subsistence level. By seizing Navajo livestock, the government is forcing many families into hunger and extreme poverty. They are taking our sheep away, trying to make us move. They are taking away everything that we need to live. That's what they're doing to us right now. They're trying to kill us one way or another slowly or fast. Of the first group of Navajo relocated, 25% of the adults are dead. Joel Ashki was emotionally disturbed by his grandfather's death. To restore Joel to balance, three generations of his family took part in a ceremony which lasted two days and a night. While the ceremony restored Joel's well-being, his family life has been ruptured and his culture continues to be destroyed. The American taxpayers are paying half a billion dollars to move 3,000 families into tracked houses like these. 
Here it is not good for us. We have to pay for everything. Electricity, water, the land, taxes. Here it is a small place. You can't go anywhere. It's like being in jail. Back there I had a good home, even though it was a hogan. There if you have sheep, you can use that as your food. Here there is none. There's not even one sheep around. I come out with nothing. I'm old and alone. It seems I miss it all. Well, there's a simplistic uh, view around that uh, relocation uh, uh, is, is harsh and that it's unusual and so on. People get relocated in America every day, and I don't want to compare troops, but uh, you, uh, the interstate highway system, uh, they go through your living room with a bulldozer in, in the interest of getting something settled and getting a highway where it has to go. So this isn't the only uh, place in an American system, in, in all phases of the American system. Somebody sometimes has to give up what they don't want. I was in Vietnam in 67, 68. I was a paratrooper over there. They told me, come and help us fight for your land and our land. They tried me to go over there. See, I fought for this land right here I'm standing on. <laughs> Chilson grew up with 11 brothers and sisters on land that had nourished three generations of his ancestors. His father died when they were young, but his mother kept the family together. I always wonder how she managed to brought all us up. She didn't speak. No English and she didn't work. It was this land that the way my dad set it up for us that helped her. He built wells, and, you know, he planted trees. We used to have close to 300 heads of cattle. Chilson returned from Vietnam, married, and was raising his own family on the land when the Bureau of Indian Affairs seized most of his livestock. After the stock reduction, we got to find a job to support ourselves. His herd confiscated, Chilson went to Flagstaff and became a mechanic. I used to drive back and forth, but that was 75 miles away, so I moved into town. We were renting in town, then they said, we don't live here anymore. To them, we, we don't exist here, even they told that to my mother. She used to stay here by herself. She almost froze because the fire was out and she got sick. So we don't let her stay here by herself anymore. The government claimed that since the McCabe's were not residing on the land, they were not eligible for replacement housing or assistance of any kind. Chilson was forced to move his mother into a trailer in Flagstaff, where she died of a broken heart. I blame my mother, Stefan on this whole thing, relocation. See, they can destroy you know, a beautiful, loving family. Ever since my mother died, I had a dream about my mother being with me at home. And I always dream about the cattle. This uh, land dispute did uh, a lot of damage to me and my family because, you know, we've been cheated. We've been lied to. We've been called names. I get sick. I can't sleep at night. So I'm on my own now. I don't have any dream right now. The government took it away. The Dine people were forced to go to Fort Sumner. Washington said there won't be any more wars. These arms we will lay down. Then there was a world war. He asked for our children. Some of them never returned. 
So Washington dropped that treaty. No, no. 